Hi, it's Kei from Japan. In this video, I will be talking about Kumo and Chikou span of Ichimoku Kinko Hyo. And later on the video, I will show you the strategies when the market is in the range or market is in the trend with some real chart examples. Uh, basically, Kumo works as resistance or support zone, and Chikou span works to identify the strength of the market, like how strong the trend is appearing on the market. Uh, but I will talk about them in details with some practical situations. So please press a good button if you like this topic already and make sure to subscribe and hit the bell as I have more videos to come about Ichimoku Kinko Hyo. So let's get started right now. So let me explain about Kumo first, right? As I mentioned on the previous video, Kumo or the cloud is the area between Senko Span 1 and Senko Span 2. So let me explain Senko Span 2 first, right? What this shows is this line is actually showing the equilibrium point in a long time span. You know, Tenkan Sen suggests the equilibrium point in the shortest time span for the past 9 candlesticks, and Kijun Sen shows the equilibrium point of the middle time span for the past 26 days and Senko span 2 shows the equilibrium point for the long time span and you will see by its calculation you know I value calculation a lot for any indicators because if you don't know it then basically you don't know what it's meant to be created for so Senko span 2 is calculated like this it's a half price of the past 52 candlestick time. You know, you take the highest price and the lowest price of the past 52 days and divide it by 2 so that you get the middle point, you know, the middle price level. Then you forward it to 26 candlestick time ahead. Now, I can hear your voice like, why you move it to 26 days ahead anyways? You know, it should have been drawn at the current candlestick time like Tenkan Sen or Kijun Sen but why it's forwarded to 26 days ahead? That makes me even more confusing, right? Now to answer your questions, I will show you why with the chart example. Like I said, Senko Span 2 shows the equilibrium point of the long time span as compared to Tenkan Sen and Kijun Sen and when the price breaks the Senko Span 2, that's when the price actually breaks Kumo. Uh, for example, let's look at this chart. This is a daily chart of Euro Pound, and the red vertical line on the left is on May 6th, and the vertical line in the middle is on July 17th. And if you calculate the days between May 6th and July 17th, it's exactly on 52 trading days. So the bull trend persisted for exact 52 days according to the Ichimoku time cycle, you know, uh, Kihon Suchi, and stopped here beautifully. So if you look at the Kumo, Senko Span 2 is right here at this point, you know, right in between the highest price of 0 0.90510 and the lowest price of 0 0.84874. Right in between this price is the Senko Span 2, which I showed it on this yellow line. So here is a question for you. Let's say the market that kept going up for the past 52 days starts to go down, starts to go bearish. You know, like imagine the market that kept going up for the past 52 days turned into bearish and start to keep going down for the next 52 days with the same speed, you know, with the same momentum. Then from that top, from the highest price level, here's a question, how many days can we expect the market will take to come back to the middle price? How many days? It's 26 days, right? This is not a trick question. You know, simply, if the market takes 52 days to go up from the lowest price to the highest price on the market, and if, you know, if it takes another 52 days to go bearish and come back to the same price level, when does the market reach back to the middle price? It's 26 days ahead from today, right? So what Senko Span 2 suggests is this. It helps us to see the point where the equilibrium will be in the long time span if the market is on this 
52 day cycle, and that's the reason why it's forward to 26 candles ahead. So, here's another question. For what reason is this? You know, this is the important question for what reason? Well, this is a part of a concept in Ichimoku Kinko Hyo, and that's a concept of expectation. And it's a little different from what we usually call expectation or prediction. But it's like for measuring things in advance, you know? Measuring the market and draw reference points in advance, so to speak. And why drawing those reference points in advance is, you know, it's not for predicting the future because the price might not gonna be moving exactly that way, right? But the true reason is to check and compare if the current market is strong or weak by comparing with the reference points. And if you can imagine, without any reference, you cannot know what's right or what's wrong, right? It's like when you are a salesperson in a company and let's say you made $10,000 sales in a month, but if you don't know the standard reference, you cannot tell if the score is good enough or bad within the company, right? It's like you draw a graph of uh, average sales within the sales department and if the $10,000 sales turns out to be beyond the average, then you can say you have a very good result. However, no matter how big the sales you made within the month, if the result is below the graph, you know, below the standard, then that means the result is relatively bad as compared to others, right? So when you have a standard reference that you can refer to, then you know if the condition is good or bad and also how good or how bad it is, right? And that's why Ichimoku Kinko here really wants to look at. It shows the standard reference point of the market so that it helps you to see the market situation as it goes on. And it actually tells you the most important lesson for any investment. The lesson is, when the price keeps going up, buyers never feel worry about it because they are basically on profit. And as more buyers come into the market, it keeps going up, right? But at some point, the market will go backwards. You know, no market keeps going up or keeps going down. But at some point, rejection must happen 100%. So if you think about it, the question is up to where? or until when the buyers will hold their positions while it's on bullish. Well, this is the hardest part because if you keep holding it even after the trend reverse, and if you keep holding the position beyond where you bought, then your profit might, you know, will turn into loss. But if you close the position too early, then the market might push back and keep going up afterwards, and you lose the chance of getting more profit, and you might regret why you close the position too early, right? So now you know what Senko Span 2 is really for. It actually shows the equilibrium point of, of uh, if the price moves downwards after the bearish trend, it shows the exact psychological spot, you know? If it's above the candles, then simply that means buyers are stronger. And if the price is below the Senko Span 2, then simply sellers are stronger. But even before the market comes to that point, Senko Span 2 marks the reference price for you in advance, and that's what, what it's really for. Um, for example, let's say the market marks the highest, but it's just going slightly down for the next couple of days. You know, not really like going down with the similar momentum like in the past 52 days, but let's say it's weaker, just slightly going downwards. In that case, some buyers might start to be worried just because of the fact that the price is going down backwards now. But if you have the reference point on Senko Span 2, you can be sure that as long as the price is above the line, you don't have to be worried about anything, right? In contrast, if the market goes down very strong from the next day, like even if it doesn't go back to the middle price level, if the market goes back down sharply like this, and heading to the yellow line, then that momentum can possibly break it downwards before 26 days. And in that case, it tells you that the momentum is very strong compared to you know past 52 days, and you decide to close the position. So you know the true meaning of Senko Span 2 is to show the momentum after the price marks the highest, and that's what it's really for. And that's why it's forwarded to 26 days ahead. And this is important because if you don't know this basic knowledge, 
you might be just looking at the price breaking Kumo and say, oh, it just broke the Kumo. So it must be the signal of a new downtrend and you just play sell and the price goes backwards and lose money, right? But now, you know, understanding why it's forwarded 26 days ahead is important. And if you're not still clear, watch the explanation over and over again to really grasp the concept, right? Uh, let's just take another example and I will practically show you how I see the chart and trade with Senko Span too. Here is OZ Daughter in one hour time frame. And between this candle and this candle, the highest price and the lowest price are on these lines. And the half price is right in between here. So the Senko Span 2 is located at this point, right? And let's say you bought it right here and still holding the position until now. And after you mark the highest, the price actually goes down like this. At this point, you might be thinking, well, maybe I will still hold the position. And as the time goes by, the price goes up and down and heads towards the Senko Span 2. And at this point, you get ready to close the position or you can actually close the position and wait for another trade chance. So uh, let's say you close the position here, okay? And as you see the price action, you see the price doesn't go below the single span too. And also the price was supported by this support line here a couple of times. And also you see a wick pointing downwards. Then this is the perfect entry timing for buy right here. And the price keeps going up. See? This is how you trade with single span too, because at this point, it tells you the bull trend is not still over yet. You know, looking at this consolidation, it's like for a day, quite long, right? So when you are actually trading and holding the position, you might start to get worried whether if you should close the position or not because it looks like it's unstable, like the market is unstable. And after you close it, the market goes up afterwards and you regret. So if you know the reference point like this, then you know you don't have to be worried about closing your position until it breaks the Senko Span too. You know, until the price breaks Kumo downwards because you know buyers are still stronger as long as the price is up above and you can be psychologically safer too. And with that in mind, you combine with other lines and indicators to get further confirmations, okay? So that was one example how you see the Senko Span too. Um, later on, I will show you another practical examples. All right, so let's move on to single span one. Single span one is calculated like this: you take the price of tenkan sen and take the price of kijun sen and get the mid price of these by dividing it by two, and you move the price 26 days or 26 candles ahead, right? And by this single span one and single span two creates kumo, you know. Also, simply. Single span one is actually for showing the price to be in a danger zone, so to speak. Like if the price breaks single span one, that means the market will be consolidating with some volatility and eventually the price might break Kumo. For example, this is a daily chart of gold. And if you look at the price action, it's been on a stable bull trend. And on this day, the price goes into Kumo, right? Meaning it broke single span one downwards. So when you have a buy position here and still holding it, you don't have to worry about closing it as long as the price moves up above Kumo, you know, up above Senko Span 1. But when it breaks it and goes into Kumo, that's when you want to watch out the market because it could break the whole Kumo downwards. So in this chart, the price once went into Kumo, but it didn't break it downwards, but it keeps going up. But later for the second trial, the price dropped all the way down to Senko Span 2. And this is where you really need to think of closing your position. In this case, the price looks to be supported by Senko Span 2 and went upwards, but eventually it broke downwards, right? So if I were having buy position here, I would just close it here as soon as I see the closing candlestick is breaking single span 2 downwards right here. So single span 1 gives you the information that the price might going up and down towards single span 2 and therefore warns you as a danger zone so to speak. 
And when I see a candle is inside of Kumo, I usually don't trade because it could go either direction. I would rather be trading after the price breaks Kumo upwards or downwards. But if the price is within the Kumo, then basically I won't trade unless I see any other significant signals or other indicators or you know different time frames. You know, uh, let me tell you, every time I look at Kumo, I imagine like a flying airplane. <laughs> like the price is an airplane and Kumo as a storm, you know. And when the airplane is way above the Kumo or way below the Kumo, the weather is beautiful with all the sunshine and the view is just perfect, clear, and the flight is all going well. But as the aircraft reaches to the storm, it tries to avoid it, right? So it's like in this place, the airplane is trying to avoid the Kumo storm. In this case, slightly inside of it, but eventually it went upwards. But look what happens afterwards. It lost the power and went inside of Kumo, inside of a storm again. Then within the storm, you know, the wind is very strong with lots of rain and thunders and all. So the flight gets very unstable. And it tries their best to go out as soon as possible and eventually it goes out. When you see the market like this, it's kind of fun, so I like to imagine like this every time I look at the market, but so uh, this is the reason why I avoid trading when the price is actually inside of Kumo, because usually the price gets very unstable, you know, and Senko Span 1 actually tells you exactly when the price goes into the storm that it gets unstable, and also once it goes into Kumo, Watch out when the price actually hits Senko Span 2. That can be a breakpoint of the equilibrium for the past 52 candles. All right, let's move on to Chikou Span. Chikou means delay in Japanese, and literally it's the delayed line of the current close price. So in other words, you take the current close price and you move it to 20 days before. And that's what Chikou Span is. No calculations, very simple, right? Just delayed 26 days. And this is actually another unique line. What this line is for is simple, you know, the purpose is just to compare the current price with the price of 26 days ago. So why do you compare with the price 26 days ago? By doing this, you can instantly know how the traders are doing 26 days later depending on what the current price level is. And remember, 26 is one of the Kihon Suchi, you know, one of the base numbers in Ichimoku Kinko Hyo. And it's a psychological number in terms of how long a trader can bear to hold their positions. Like, if the buyers are winning, after 26 days, they tend to close the position. Or even when they are not winning because of, uh, you know, persisting consolidation, after 26 days, they tend to close their positions anyways. So whether or not the traders are still winning or not, after 26 days is very important in Ichimoku Kinko Hyo. And simply, when the Chikou Span is above a candle that's 26 days ago, you know buyers are winning. And when it's below a candle that's 26 days ago, then you know sellers are winning in that case. Okay? So let me show you that from a chart. This is a daily chart of dollar yen and here on this yellow line is a Chikou Span. So when the price is interacting with the candles like this, in this area, this is when buyers or sellers are not winning or losing. And you can see it's actually consolidating, right? But look at this point where the Chikou Span starts to go below the candles. Uh, this is when buyers are winning or sellers are winning. Which one? Buyers or sellers winning? It's the sellers that are winning just because Chikou Span went below the candlestick. So we can say that this is the start of a downtrend. Practically speaking, the price might go backwards from here like this. So to be safer, if you're a Ichimoku trader, you put support line here at the recent lowest, and when the Chikou Span breaks the support line right here, that's exactly when you can sell, and possibly the price keeps going down. So Chikou Span is just a line that's delayed 26 days before, but it tells you how sellers and buyers are doing for the past 26 days, so that you can expect the next trend start from a consolidation. Because like I said, 26 is the number 
that traders can bear to hold their positions. So now I've covered all the five lines in Ichimoku Kinko Hyo. You know, Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen, and Senko Span 1, Senko Span 2, and Chiko Span, as well as its history and philosophy. Um, if you haven't watched those um, series of videos, please go ahead and watch them because now I will be moving on to the most fun part, you know, to actually show you the trading strategies with all these lines. So here we go. This is again a daily chart of gold and I zoomed out a little bit this time. And in this chart, I will explain how to trade when the market is in a consolidation and when it's in a trend. So listen carefully now. First, I will explain the consolidation strategy. Look when the price is consolidating here and look at the lines. You see all the five lines are interacting. So in other words, when all the five lines are interacting, you can say that it's a consolidation. So you better think to trade within a range between here and here. You know, and when the price touches the line, you buy and sell, right? But look when the trend starts. When a bull trend started, first the Tenkan Sen will go across Kijun Sen, then Chikou Span goes over candles, then finally the price breaks Kumo, or the price breaks Senko Span 2 upwards. And this is called Sanyaku Koten in Japanese. It means three positive signals. And this is the typical sign of beginning bull trend. And as a result, the market went all the way up. So when the market is in a consolidation, all the lines are lined up horizontally. So you place lines like support, resistance, and trend lines like this, and you trade accordingly, you know. And here is another effective strategy. While consolidation, look at the Kijun Sen, the blue line in this case. Because when it's in the range, Kijun Sen goes horizontally too, but it actually shows the middle price of the range. In other words, the price tends to go back to the Kijun Sen and go beyond, but comes back to the line again. So when the price is right on the Kijun Sen, don't trade, but you see how far the price goes away from Kijun Sen. Like you measure the pips, and if you find it to be like 30 pips, then next time when the price goes away 30 pips from the Kijun Sen, you place buy and hold it up to the upper resistance level, like things like that. This is called Kairi trading. You know, Kairi means estrangement in Japanese. So when the market is consolidating, look at the Kijun Sen and you measure how far the price goes from that Kijun Sen over time. And when you find it like, uh, let's say 20 pips, then wait until the price goes away 20 pips next time from Kijun Sen until you buy because you know Kijun Sen is the equilibrium point of the past 26 candles so it tends to show the possible pips that can be separated from that line and you can refer to it on your trades within that consolidation. Okay next trend strategy. When the price starts to go up like this, first thing you look at is Tenkan Sen. It's a red line on this chart, but when the momentum is strong, the price tends to be supported by Tenkan Sen, like these points. Then the next support line will be Kijun Sen. This works as the second support line when the market is bullish. And as long as the market is above Kijun Sen, you don't need to worry about closing the position. Just keep holding it until the price hits the Kijun Sen, and if it's supported again, then you keep holding it until it breaks downwards. Or if you don't have any buy positions, wait until the price is supported by the Tenkan Sen or Kijun Sen, and then things to place buy, right? And this is the current chart of gold as I'm recording this on September 15th. So let's try to see what can happen next. This is the daily chart, but if you look at the recent candles, it's breaking the Kijun Sen downwards, right? It was not supported by the Kijun Sen like at this point. So that means the price might be hitting Kumo next. And when the price goes into Kumo, like when it breaks the Senko Span 1 downwards, that's when the price goes into the storm so the market can be unstable. Maybe the price goes way down to Senko Span 2 like we saw earlier on the other chart, or it could be in a range with some volatility. So if the price goes into Kumo, I wouldn't recommend to trade this based on the daily chart time frame. So just go watch the other currency pair and give it a time until the price breaks Kumo on either direction. 
and maybe the price could be resisted by Senko Span 1 and that could match with the support line like this. Then you can think of buying at that point. Also, let me show you another thing. I wanted to actually open a chart and see with your own eyes, but if you take the recent highest and if you go 52 days backwards, it's actually on this candlestick. And the middle price is at this line, which is the Senko Span 2. And it's actually shown here on this chart, right? So based on what I said earlier about Senko Span 2, what can you see now? Like, what kind of momentum can you see from the current market? I will give you 5 seconds, right? Alright, time is up. So let me show you what I see now. First, I will draw a line like this to the highest. And then with the same angle, I draw another descending line like this and I connect the single span too. Alright, so how is the current price momentum? It's going down sharply, right? Like I explained, this line that I just drawn is the standard reference line of, of when the price is supposed to go downwards to the same price level with 52 day cycle. And by comparing this line with the current price action, you can see that the current bearish momentum is relatively stronger. So we can see that the market sentiment is relatively on sale biased. So what can you expect afterwards? If the price goes just straight down to this line of Senko Span 2, and if it breaks it downwards even before this day, chances are the price might be going backwards for real as you can see the head and shoulder pattern here. But if the price is supported by the Senko Span 1 or even on this support line here, then the price keeps going up. And if it marks another high, then you take that high and go to 52 days backwards and you compare the price with the Senko Span 2 and draw lines like this so that you know the momentum of the market at that time. So this is basically how I use Ichimoku Kinko Hyo in my real trading and it's been working very well, especially on daily or above. You can of course use it on like uh, 1 hour or below, but based on my experience, daily time frame works the best with this. And I mean this pattern, this kind of cycles shows up a lot like on any currency pairs. So if you start to notice these things on the market, I'm sure your trading will not only be better, but also it helps you to see the market from like different angle so that you can be ahead above from other traders because Ichimoku Kinko Hyo is a very unique and awesome tool. Alright, thank you for watching the video. On the next video, I'll be talking about the wave theory and price observation theory. And if you combine these two theories with Kumo and other lines, you know, the time theory, then you will be a real master of Ichimoku Kinko Hyo. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you don't miss the next one. And don't forget to press a good button on this video too. Alright, see you on the next one. Stay gold. Mata ne.